A few days ago, I received this question. With a slicer linked to a pivot chart, is there a way of highlighting the column, but keeping all the data? This is like the visuals that we find in Power BI. So have we got something similar in Excel? No, but we can create something pretty close. And that's what we're doing in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. If you want to work along with this video, then please download the example file and you'll find links in the descriptions box below. The example file includes the data that we are working with. We have three columns, item, region, and value. We have six items, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, and Foxtrot. And we have four regions, North, South, East, and West. And we have a value for each of those items. And what we want to do is to create an interactive chart with slicers. So when we click on those slicers, it highlights the items that have been selected, but also retains the total value of the data. So that's the goal. Now let's head over and start creating our calculations. For this solution, we're going to use an include column. So in cell D3, I'll type the header of include, and then I'm going to create a special formula. Equals, subtotal, open bracket, and I'm going to use the count A version. So that is three. I'll enter a comma, and then I can select any column from the same row. I'm going to select the value column. I'll then close that bracket and press return. So that displays one in every single row. Subtotal is a special function which ignores any hidden rows. Therefore, if we have one, it means that it's counting one visible row. But if any of our rows are filtered out, that means include will then calculate to zero. So one means we are including that value in our calculation and in our filter charts, and zero means we're not including that value in our filtered charts. So this include column of one and zero is critical to how this entire piece fits together. Next, I'll move across to the calculations tab. At the moment, this just contains some hard coded headers. We now want to calculate the values that we want to include in our chart. Let's start by looking at the items. So I need a list of items equals the sort of the unique. And for that, we want our item column. And I'll close those brackets and press return. So we've now got six items. Next, let's calculate the value that we have selected or the values that are visible in the table equals sum ifs, open bracket, and we want to sum the value, comma, from the include column, comma, where that equals one, and where our item, comma, where that is equal to the value in B5. Now B5 is a dynamic array, so I can enter hash, close the bracket and press return, and that will then perform that calculation for every item in our array. Next, we want to calculate the value of the items that have not been selected. At the moment, this will calculate to zero because everything is currently visible in our table. But let's calculate the value and then we'll see how this works later in the video. So that's equal, sum ifs, open bracket, and we want to sum the value column where our item is equal to B5, enter a hash, and close that bracket. So that is the total of everything for alpha. So therefore we just want to minus the selected value. So that'll be C5 hash. As I said, these are all calculated as zeros at present. Right, now let's do the same for our regions. Equals sort, open bracket, unique, open bracket, and then we want to select our region column close bracket, close bracket, and press return. Now let's calculate the selected value equals sum ifs, open bracket, and we want to sum the value where the include column is one, and where our region is equal to B15 hash. 
close that bracket and press return. Now let's calculate our unselected value equals sum ifs, open bracket. We want to sum the value where our region is equal to B15 hash. And we want to minus the value that is calculated in our selected column. So that will be C15 hash. And then I'll press return. And also that calculates all as zeros. But when we start filtering our data later in this video, you'll see exactly how this works. Right, now let's move on and start building our charts. Okay, it's now time to create the charts. So I'm going to select all of the values in the item section, click on the insert ribbon, and then from the bar chart drop down, I'm going to create a stacked bar chart. I'll select that. Let's do the same for the regions. So I'll select all the values, go to insert, click on the bar chart, drop down and select the stacked bar chart. Right, we now have two charts. I'll select both of those, control X to cut. I'll move across to our presentation tab and press control V to paste. So that's got our charts into the right place. We'll format them later in this video. Now we want to create our slicers to filter the table. So I'll select a cell in our data table. I'll click insert and then go to slicer. The two slicers that we want to create are one for item and one for region. So I'll select both of those and then click OK. Now you notice that as we click on our slicer, that our values are filtered. So if I select Delta, and all of the regions will come across to the calculations. You can see that Delta is fully selected. There is nothing unselected for Delta. That then flows across into our charts as well. So we're using slicers to filter our table that then flows into our calculations and our calculations flow into our charts. So I'll select both slicers, press Control X to cut those. I'll move across into the presentation tab and press Control V to paste the slicers into that tab. And that's it in terms of creation. We've created our chart and we've created our slicers. Everything now is just about formatting and presentation. In terms of formatting, the first thing we want to do is to delete our chart title. We can then delete the legend. We can also hide the chart border. So I'll select that, press Control 1. This brings up the chart area pane. I'm going to drag that across. And then I'm going to set the border to have no line. Next, let's apply some suitable colors to the bars. So our blue area here is the selected area. I'm going to use a dark gray for that. And then for the unselected area, I'll use a light gray. Next, let's format our axis. So I'll select that. And then from the axis options, we want our categories in reverse order. And that's because for whatever reason, charts always start with the first category at the bottom and the last category at the top. So we want to reverse that order. That then puts our axis at the top. So I'll select maximum category. That then puts that axis at the bottom. I'm then going to select one of the chart series and set the gap width to be 50%. Next, let's add some data labels. So I'll select the dark area, I'll click on the plus and select data labels. Those labels are currently black, so they're difficult to see, but I will select them, change that to a white font and then make it bold. We want to display our data label if we have a value. But if the value is zero, we really don't want a zero displayed on our axis. So I'm going to select a data label and then we're going to change the number format. So from the number section at the bottom, we're going to create a custom number format. And that format is going to be hash for a positive number. I'll enter a semicolon and then in brackets, I'll enter another hash for a negative number another semicolon, and then if the value is zero, I'll enter space, and then I'll click add. Okay, let's close this. 
I'll move our slices and now let's see how this reacts. Fantastic, so now as we move through our slices, whatever items we have selected, they are highlighted in our chart. I'm going to click on that chart, press Control C, click on my other chart, come down to paste, paste special, and then we're going to paste the chart formats. Fantastic, that's formatted the chart. Now let's move on and format our slicers. I'll select the item slicer, right click and go to slicer settings. I don't want to display header. Here in the sorting options, you can see we have ascending A to Z, but we also have use custom lists when sorting. Now we definitely want to sort A to Z, and that's because we sorted the data in our calculations. We use that sort function that has then come across into our chart. So our chart is in alphabetical order. However, if our slicer contains items that are also in a custom list, that means our slicer could appear in a different order. So we want to uncheck use custom lists when sorting. And then we want to uncheck visually indicate items with no data. So we want none of the items selected in this right hand section. And then I'll click OK. Let's do the same for our region. So right click, slicer settings, don't display header, don't use custom lists, and we don't want to visually indicate items with no data. Then I'll click OK. Right, there's still some more formatting to do, so I'll select our first slicer. I'll come to the slicer ribbon, and here we have the slicer styles. Find the style that's closest to the style that you used for your charts. I think this gray one is closest in terms of color. So I'm going to right click and then select duplicate. This brings up the modify slicer styles dialog box. And I'm going to call this my slicer style. Now I want to format my slicer. I want to start by removing the outside border. So that's on the whole slicer. I'll select format and then from border, I'll select none and click OK. Next, we have the selected items with data. Let's format that. Again, I want no border. I now want to apply a fill color. For that fill color, I want that color to match exactly the same color as we have used in our chart. And then finally, because this is a dark color, I want to make sure that my font is white so that it's easily visible. I'll click OK on that. Then for the unselected item with data, I'll click that and then click Format. We want our font to remain black. We want no border and we don't want a fill. So we want to apply a white color. Then I'll click OK and then OK again. Now with my slicer selected from the slicer styles section, I can select that slicer style. Let's apply that same style to our region slicer as well. Fantastic, everything is now formatted. From here on out, it's all about layout. So I'm going to select my chart, just move that across. Then I'll select the slicer and move that across. And we don't need that to be as wide. There we go. And I'm going to move my chart so that it's below my slicer. And then we can change the height of the chart so that the chart lines up with our slicer labels. Fantastic, that's now fully aligned. Now if we wanted bigger slicer labels, what we can do is click our slicer, come to the slicer ribbon and change the height of our slicer buttons. But this looks good. Let me select my chart, and I'll just make that slightly smaller. Now let's get our second slicer and let's apply the same principles. So we'll drag our chart into place, make our chart resize so that the bars are lined up with the slicer. And there we go, we now have everything formatted and presented in the correct way. So as we click in our slicers, you'll see it updates both charts. And if we select the first item, hold shift 
and click the last item, it selects everything in those charts. And equally, as we remove things, you can see that our slicers only show the items that have been selected. Now you might decide that you don't like this heavy dark color. You might decide that instead to use a different color for the font, maybe a light color or maybe no color. You can apply whatever formatting you like so that it's easy for a user to know where they need to click to filter these charts. And that's it. That's how we can create a Power BI style cross filtering using Excel. Now we know that this isn't as slick as Power BI, but it's still quite nice. We've got some slicers and when we select the items in those slicers, it updates different charts depending on what's been selected. And this is all because of that include column that we used at the start. That is key to filtering everything because that determines what goes into our selected column or our unselected column for our calculations. If you like what we teach, why not head over to our training academy over at excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy and join up. We'd love to see you in there so that you can advance your Excel skills. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.